All right, what's up everyone? Uh, this is for those of you who missed the live lecture today. Um, I just wanted to kind of point out um, some things that you're going to need to do if um, you're not going to be attending the live lecture. So anything that I write down on this board, you should have in your notes, okay? Now, in addition to that, if I say that there's something that you need to have like, additionally written down, so today it's going to be this chart, that's the other thing that I'm expecting you to have down. Now, I'm not asking you to write these things down for no reason at all. It's that you're going to need to use these examples and this table to actually be able to complete the practice. So if, having, if you have these in your notebook, then when you go to the Alex for practice, then you'll be able to do that, no problem. So today, what we're going to be doing is starting our introduction to college algebra class. And basically what this class is going to be is a getting you really like head started into the class that you're, most of you are going to be taking next year. Um, at almost every college, you're required to take like a math 101. Uh, it might be titled differently, math 117 or something like that. But essentially what it is, it's called college algebra. And it's just making sure that you know all of the things from algebra one, algebra two, uh, and you're comfortable using those like in, in the setting. So uh, we're going to be doing some review. If you remember from algebra one, if you were really good at that, then this is going to be a pretty easy unit. Um, but this is, like I said, it's going to be something that you're going to see in college. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the properties of real numbers. Okay. So if you look up here at my table, we have the commutative property, the associative property, identity property, the inverse property, property of zero, and then we have the distributive property. Okay. So what I need you to notice is that um, four of the properties apply for both addition and multiplication. So for the commutative property, for the associative property, for the inverse property, uh, and for the identity property, we have those of addition and multiplication. Now, the last two properties, the multiplicative property of zero and the distributive property, those don't apply to both. And we're going to talk about those separately. So when I do these examples, I'm going to start with the ones that apply to both, and then we'll do those, uh, those last two kind of as a separate thing. All right, so let's get started. Again, if you are um, watching this recorded lecture, you need to have this table down in your notes, and then you're also going to need to have these examples that I'm going to be written down, writing down. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the commutative property. And the way that I think about the commutative property is I think of commute. Like you are commuting to work or you're commuting to school, like you're traveling somewhere, okay? And again, we have the commutative property for addition and we have it for multiplication. So as you can see in our chart, for addition, what the commutative property says is that if you have some number A plus some number B, that is the same thing as some number B plus some number A. So to give you an example of the commutative property of, an, of addition, if you had three plus two, that would be equal to two plus three, okay? So that is the commutative property of addition. Commute, commute, we're traveling to work, and then we go backwards to go home, okay? Now, the commutative property of multiplication is the same thing, except instead of addition, we have multiplication. So if we had three times two, you guys know that's six, that is the same thing as two times three. We know that this is six and we know that this is six. So again, the commutative property, what does it say? Well, it says that if you have any addition or multiplication, you can write it in either any way you want. So two times three is the same thing as three times two, just like two plus three is the same thing as three plus two. All right, that's the commutative property, commute. Think about going to work and then coming home from work. All right, now the next thing we're gonna talk about is the associative property. And when you think of associative property, I need, to think you, I need you to think of associate. If you associate with somebody, it means that you're connected to them in some way. And in math, the way we associate numbers is with parentheses. So if we had, so basically what it says here, if you read the property, it says that A plus, and then parentheses B plus C, that is the same thing as A plus B and then plus C, 
Okay. So if we're putting that in numbers, if we had uh, one plus and then two plus three was in parentheses, five plus one is six. That's the same thing as one plus two, which is three, plus three, which is six. Okay. So the uh, associative property of addition just says that we can move these parentheses and it's the same thing. And if we're talking about multiplication, same thing, except instead of addition, we're going to have multiplication. So one times two times three is six. So is one times two, which is two times three. Okay. So associative property, think associate, that's the parentheses. Parentheses don't matter if we're talking about addition or multiplication. All right, so we've got two of them knocked down. We've got two more to go um, for the ones that have both addition and multiplication. So the next one we're gonna talk about is the identity property. All right, and for identity, you just need to think of identity itself. So this property just says that if you add something or if you multiply something by a number, you're going to get itself. And it's different for addition and for multiplication. So for addition, if you notice, it says that a plus zero equals a. That should make sense, right? Because anything plus zero is itself. So if we're thinking about a number, if we did three plus zero, that's equal to three, okay? So that's the identity property of addition. Adding zero to anything gives you zero. Now, if we're talking about the identity property of multiplication, it's not multiplying by zero, it's multiplying by one that gives you yourself. So if we did three times one, that would give us three, okay? So remember, for the identity property, for addition, we're adding zero to get itself. For multiplication, we're multiplying by one to get itself. Okay, the last one that is going to be consistent for addition and multiplication is the inverse property. And when you think of inverse, what you need to think of is undo, okay? You think of inverse, you need to think undo. It undoes it. So if we have some number, let's say we have this number, um, in this case, it's A. If we have some number A, to undo that number with addition, we would add a negative a and that would give us zero. So same thing, if you had three, if you added negative three, that would give you zero, okay? Now for multiplication, we're not talking about getting to zero, we're talking about canceling it out, okay? So to cancel a number out, you need to multiply by one over that number and that's what it says. So a times one over a is equal to one. So an example would be three times one third, that's equal to one, okay? So again, for the uh, inverse property of addition, if you add a negative number, you get zero, it cancels it out. For the inverse property of multiplication, if we multiply by one over the number, it cancels it out, okay? So that was the first four properties. And remember, I said that that applies for both, we have those for addition and multiplication. So really, even though there's only four things written here, there's eight separate properties that we just talked about, okay? So now we gotta talk about those last two properties. So if you wanna pause and get this written down, I would do that because I'm gonna erase it here. And the last two properties we have are distribution, which distribution uh, involves both addition and multiplication. And then the other thing that we have is the multiplicative or multiplication property of zero. And that just says that anything times zero is zero. So let's get into the last two. The first one, so the multiplication property of zero. And what does the multiplication property of zero say? Well, that says that if we are multiplying anything by zero, we get zero. So an example of that could be five times zero. 
that equals zero. Another example of that could be five times X times zero. That equals zero. So it doesn't matter how many things we have, we could have five times 10 times a thousand times X times X times Y times zero. Because we had this multiplied by zero, the result is zero, okay? So that is the multiplication property of zero. Those are some examples there. Anything times zero is zero. So I'll give you another second to pause this. Get that written down. And the last thing that we are going to talk about is the distributive property. Okay, so what does the distributive property say? Well, it says that if you have some multiplication on the outside of the parentheses, so let's say, for example, we had three times x plus one, and on the inside of the parentheses, you have addition or subtraction, then you can expand this out by multiplying the number on the outside by both of the numbers that are on the inside. So this would become, 3x, 3 times 1 is 3. So this would become 3x plus 3. Another way that we could think of this, let's say we had 3 times 2 plus 4. This would be equal to 3 times 2 plus 3 times 4. Okay. So there's a couple examples. Um, keep it consistent here, multiplication, addition. Remember, with the distributive property, this sign is very important. This sign goes with this number here. So if this were a negative, then this would be a negative three. All right, remember that you have an Alex uh, assignment that is due Friday by midnight, Friday by 11.59, I think actually. Um, so 10 questions, it's all relating to these properties. Basically, it's just asking you to identify which one's which. If you can get that all done by Friday, you'll get full credit. We'll see you on Monday.